not ready. I'm not ready. I'm, it's okay. It's okay. I'm talking. Okay. okay, let's go. I just wanted to freak you out. Turn the light off. Okay, turn the light off. Why? No, 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 no. We're good. All right, let's go. We are on page... Page 329. This is a great, a very important sphera. We're on the ten sphera out. And we discussed the sphera of Keter. You have to know your characters in the play. Okay? And you have to know their lines. 29. Okay? Page 29. Page 29. We're discussing the genetical... The, <coughs> sorry. The spiritual genetic code of the universe. Okay? That every single thing goes, breaks down into these ten illuminations. Every single thing... You, in, pre, in, in, in creation, these are the roots of every single thing that we experience in creation in one form or another. Whether it's our form, or whether it's in the physical world around us, or um, in the way God deals with the world. These are the spiritual roots. Once we have this code, and you know these ten characters in this play, right? Then, once we understand the things at its roots, we can understand creation. We can understand reality. And, mostly, we can understand ourselves. Okay? How we work, and then how we can really utilize the forces around us and within us in, our, in terms of manifesting them. Okay? So that's why, why we try to understand the sphere and every single thing... You know, in other words, we have ten spheros, right? We have, to do a class class. we have ten, right? Ten is a classic number, right? Wouldn't you say? Mm -hmm. Every single thing you'll see in ten, just start with your chumash, is rooted in from here. Every single thing in ten. Ten statements of creation comes from here. Ten commandments. Ten commandments. Right? We have, also, you have the ten makot, the ten plagues in Egypt, mm -hmm. comes from here. Every single thing you'll see in ten, the ten days of generations. Ten generations. Ten generations. Generation yes. The ten on. days of repentance. Ten oh, days of okay. repentance. Oh. Every single thing you'll ever experience, or you get ten, this is the root of it. Oh. Okay. Oh. So in other words, the ten days of, cre of of repentance, day one to day ten, starts with the top one Keter. Day two is Chachma. Day three is Bina. When we do have, actually, when we get into counting the Svira Ta'omer, it has to do with the lower seven here, the roots of it. And we'll get into that, because you have to understand Svira Ta'omer. No, nobody understands Svira Ta'omer. So every single thing, the ten tests of Abraham, okay, ten plagues, ten commandments, okay? Somebody else said another ten. Uh, Days of repentance. Ten days of repentance, we also, that's in time. That's in the time in our days of the year. You'll see. Everything has a manifestation. Every single thing we see in Torah has a manifestation through these ten. ten you can look at it as ten windows, ten illuminations. And the biggest thing that we say that what these ten spheres are, the classic understanding is a Hebrew word called hanhaga. Hanhaga, which means the way God drives the world. Drive or guide. Guide is good, but uh, guide is kind of like, uh, okay. Drive is more like, how do you like my driving? Mm -hmm. Like you're in the back seat, and God's driving. Yeah, so control, more of a control. Right, so, you know, and, and, and usually most people have a big problem with that. Because they don't like the way God's driving. They want right? to drive. We have to make a big bumper sticker, right? Mm -hmm. God, how do you like my driving? <laughs> Copy 2800 Shema <laughs> right. So you know Because cause of course He turns down roads That you don't necessarily like And he's mm -hmm. going to be going The opposite direction We're supposed to be going north And you're going south And you got all kinds of questions And sinus And he'll turn every once in a while And going Do you trust me? And that's where you have the challenge Or do you trust him? Or not? Okay How he's driving Where he's going Right? And most people are agitated in the car where really you can be having a great time. Mm. You can be enjoying the ride and going, let's make this a learning experience. Mm. But meanwhile, people will get agitated, complain, right? Yeah. So, uh, 
question is, you know, so, so we look at these as hanhagot, the way God drives the world, the way he expresses himself. <clears throat> we said this is, this is like garments that God, God wears because, you know, God is infinite. <coughs> we can't really understand the infinite. But when God puts on garments or he behaves a certain way, so then we can have a relationship with him. So these are ways that we relate to God. And then also these we spoke about are within ourselves. They exist within us, these forces. So we discussed Keter. Keter is something so sublime. It's like represents the highest will. That it's like a hidden thought where you can't even know where it comes from. And then Hachmo and, and, and Bina were like the left brain and right brain. Within ourselves, we have a right brain. We have the left brain. The right brain is kind of like the way that is always taught to us. It's, it's a very um, uh, spatial, uh, artistic, uh, what do you, you had a word for it, abstract style thinking, right? Very abstract is the right brain. That's Hachma. Very abstract. It's like a seed where you don't see a, a tree in here, but yet there's infinite trees in a seed. And then there's Bina, which is more the linear, the, the, the left brain, which we say is the more linear way that a person thinks. Mathematical. Puts into concepts. Breaks it down. Okay? So now we're on the sphere of dot. Dot, you'll see on page 29 here. As you see, it's dotted. You see how the circle here has got dots around it? So dot, we call it a quasi-sphera. Quasi. Because <clears throat> the big rule is Okay, that it's mutually exclusive, like I had with number three, it's mutually exclusive with Keter, with crown. When crown is hidden, dot manifests. When crown is around, dot is not. In other words, if Keter is manifesting, is expressing, there is no dot. When dot, when Keter is hidden, so then you have a manifestation of what we call dot. Dot literally means knowledge, but it means way more than that. Okay? Can I ask why? What? Why when the Keter is... Oh, I'll explain right now. I'll explain right now. Rabbi Nachman gets into it. It's beautiful. Okay? <clears throat> it's so unbelievable when you get this, and, and it takes you to such, such a place of understanding. Whew. Now, because really there's two concepts which in our brains, our limited brains, cannot grasp at the same time. We can't. We can't. Except people always will come up with some kind of explanation. But as far as all the philosophers go, there's really no explanation for it. And that is the big, huge dichotomy of, of God's knowledge versus free will. Our free will. We, we have this ultra-important ingredient in creation that we never want to detract. It must be in creation. And we've talked about this before. It's called free will. We must have free will. We have to make our own efforts to choose to do the right thing at the right time or at whatever a given time. We have to have that. Free will. Okay? And yet there's all the whole big huge dichotomy of wait a minute. If God knows what I'm going to do in a minute from now, where's my free will? If God knows what I'm going to do in five minutes or ten or an hour or an hour tomorrow, Where's my free will? Then I really don't have free will because it's determined. So you have a big dichotomy of determinism versus, okay, free will. That is Keter and Dot. You want to know where that expresses itself? Right here. Keter is free will. Keter is completely free. You have free reign. Dot is, I know what you're going to do in five minutes, so you really don't have free will. So if you have one, you can't have the other. We can't understand how they go together, even though people explain it to me, and I do like their explanation the way they say it. There's kind of like, God, he knows it, but yet, he's, he, but yet there, he doesn't. But yet, no, he does know it. He's hovering over, and it is already predetermined, but yet there's this vacated space where you have free will. But it kind of doesn't really answer it. And if all the rabbis in Jerusalem that I've spoken with say, there really is no answer. Don't try it. No matter what words you're going to try to convolute it in, 
It's not an answer. We can't grasp both those things simultaneously. Because if I have free will, I can do something else, right? So then God really doesn't know what I'm going to do. And if, and if God is, in fact, as we're taught, orchestrates everything that goes on with us, who we meet, what happens in our lives, then again, you know, where's the free will? Yeah, you know, in terms of what our reaction that, right? is going to be, if he knows what our reaction is going to be, and then or, where's our free will? Right. If it's all orchestrated, but, but, you know, who but you yet we have to have free, and... But yet we have to have free will. I have to choose, I get to choose whatever reaction that happens. But yet God is orchestrating a lot of things in creation. <clears throat> and then free will is my reaction to those things. But if God really, does he know what my reaction is going to be? Yes. Yes. Like a, then, a oh, wait a minute. Hello. It's a my problem. reaction. Yeah. This is my reaction. It's this is concept. my spot. But depending on okay. that moment, you might respond differently. So, and so I think the path is laid out for you. And I think yeah. God generally knows which way you're going to go. But at each turn, you're given that option for free will to stay on that path or find another one. And if you're true to yourself truly true to yourself, you're going to stay on the path okay. he's laid out. Once okay. again, but if you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, if I time, want to make a choice right now to throw off my kippah and throw off my, and my senses and go and eat a bread and an in and out burger, I have the total choice to do that. There's no, 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 you don't. I smell that stuff. It smells right. really <laughs> good by people. Okay? But Hashem knows what you're going to do anyway. Right? It's all, it's orchestrated. The, 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 well, at least relationships. I, 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 I don't want to get involved in this, but we can understand that there's an issue here. And it needs yeah. to be explained. Yeah. Okay? That's a good way to put it, Rabbi. <laughs> okay? So the idea how that is really explained, according to Rabbi Kaplan and many others, that that's why when Keter is present, Dot is not. Because Dot represents God's knowledge of how you're going to react and what you're going to do. Okay? So if Dot, if Keter is there, which which is, we got to have food. For, why do we have to have free will? Why do we have to have free will? Because God wants to be the ultimate giver. The ultimate giving, as we always talk about, is where that giving is done, right, in a way where it is earned. Mm. It has to be an earned receiving. It can't just be a freebie, right? Keter is, is about the ultimate giving, which is where it is a earned giving. It rids us of the principle of the Namada Kasufa, which we call the bread of shame, mm -hmm. which gives us that ability to feel that we're participating in creation. We're giving something back with our free choice. Because if God really knew it wasn't, it wouldn't be a really free choice, would it? If God really knows about what we're going to do. It's got to be from us. I think I've touched it a little bit. Okay? So free will is, you got, Keter is, you got to have the ultimate free will because you have to have earned the good that I'm going to give you. It has to be something where you felt that you participated in from yourself 100% without me being involved. Okay? And God, of course, is God's knowledge, which he does know everything. Right? So, whenever Keter is there, Dot cannot possibly be there. If Dot is there, Keter cannot be there. We understand a little bit mm -hmm. about it? It cannot be explained, but in the next world, it'll fit perfectly. We'll go, okay, I get it. Yeah, and the reason why this is so dynamic is everybody wave to Uncle Moshe. Okay. <laughs> so the <laughs> Earth Man in his natural habitat. <laughs> that was a great my favorite Twilight Zone. Okay. <laughs> you remember that one? That was great. Okay. Okay. That was Debbie Reynolds, I think, was in that one. Okay. So, in any case, um, uh, Dot, of course, represents God's knowledge. So, the reason why I'm saying in the next world it's going to be no problem, because if you count all the Sphirot, including Dot, if you put Keter and Dot together, how much do we end up with? Oh, what did you say? Eleven. Eleven. Eleven is a very magic number. Okay? Eleven is a very magic number. Why? What is eleven? What do you know that has that is eleven? Anything? Anybody? Okay. I thought ten was. We'll get into it. I'll have. We'll get to go. We'll I've, do it. I've heard it before. I just can't remember. The Katora. Oh, the eleven yeah. spices. Yeah. Yes. The eleven spices of the incense offering. 
11 spices, 200 bushels. Oh, for the offerings. Okay. They had, okay. when Moshe Rabbeinu, yeah. when Moshe Rabbeinu, when Moses went up to Shemayim to get the Torah, there was a big debate, right? There was a big fight, right? Because the angels wanted to kill yes. Moses. Yeah. And, and God says, hold on to my throne and answer all of their, their issues, okay? Answer their questions. So <clears throat> Moshe held on to the throne of glory, and he had this debate with the angels. And he won the debate. And after he won the debate, the angels actually shared their secrets with him. Once he became a club member, he had to go uh, initiation. He had to go through a little initiation once you're in the club. Yeah, and so you're our buddy. Okay. We got the yeah. <laughs> right. We got to bring out the cannolis. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? A Luigi, bring out the cannolis. So once he became a club member, they shared with him their secrets. So the, one of the angels, the angel of death, shared with him his secret. And the secret was, you know, wherever that incense is, I can't go there. Mm-hmm. You know what chases me away? Yeah, incense. Go away. Incense. Okay? The incense offering chases me away. Also, the angel of um, poverty told him also, you know, really? dirty places, that's where I go. If it's clean... So, so that's where we know why Moses, when all of a sudden there was a plague broke out, people were fetching, I think it was after Korah, yeah. <clears throat> and he, he quickly said to Aaron, quickly, go in the camp with the incense. And like, all of a sudden, all the commentaries go like, where did he get that from? Mm-hmm. What, what, ha- what happened there? He knew, because he learned it from, from Mount Sinai, that what chases away the angel of death? The, the 11 spices of the Ketoris, which of course corresponds to this, because the 11 spices of the Ketoris is a next world fragrance. It's a fragrance that's obviously, I'm going to use my favorite word, sucked through the vortex of the next world. <laughs> we got to go vortex. I can't get enough of that vortex. Okay. So, because really, it's, uh, it's our, obviously you're above 10. You went to 11. It's a completely different dimension. It's where Keter and Dot can co-simultaneously exist together in harmony. Okay? So that's why death, or the incense, is 11, because it corresponds to this. Okay? Brings you to the place where we know, in the end of days, death will be swallowed up forever, which is a weird way to term it. Death will be swallowed up forever. Like, who swallows it? Okay? So, it was an alligator. Okay, so... <laughs> it's a black hole. It turns inside Trying out. to get a selfie. <laughs> so, in any case, so that's why we... So, so Dot, okay... The interesting thing about Dot here, I don't think I'd put it here. Okay? But number two says the ability to bring Hoffman and Vina together. We call it applied logic. So, here's where we have the mind element the things that go on in our minds and the ideas that we're working on, where now it's getting ready to get processed into, below, into the kishkas. Okay? Yeah. I like to call it kishkas. Okay? It's, in other words, we're going to take the thoughts, energy, that we've been developing, and we're going to start to move it down, right, into the body. So that's where dot comes in. Now, dot is an unbelievable thing. I didn't write it here. Here I wrote, okay, midbrain spine, right here, right? That is supposed to be here, and which is exactly where, now, which is exactly where when we wear the tefillin, you have to have a dalit there. Now, I know this is going to sound very weird to you. It doesn't make sense, but we have to always look at it as it's all metaphor, okay? That when Moshe Rabbeinu, of course, was up in, 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 in uh, on Mount Sinai one time, he saw, you know, he saw God wearing tefillin. Mm-hmm. But he only couldn't see God's face. He only saw the dollar of God's tefillin knot. Oh, yeah. Okay? Mm-hmm. Like, what is that? That's one big dollar knot. Okay. So, no, of course not. But what it represented was here is that this is where the dot is. The back of the back of the head, that third brain, which is really what takes from Chachma and Vina together and goes into the midbrain and the spine. Did you say third brain? Do you mean third eye? No. The tefillin is the third eye. But down back here, there's like a little chunk of the brain. They call it the midbrain. Okay? Your cerebral 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He dueled. He dueled for that part. Well, that, I guess that's what I'm He's saying. He's very fond of the skull yeah, before yeah. you get into the spine. Right. Okay, so, so we, it's here, it says here, number five, it's the intellect that a person shows to the world. Because it's knowledge, but it's more than knowledge, okay? Because really, <clears throat> the biggest thing is where we see dot, if we look into the Chumash, where do we see the word named, the word dot first mentioned? Right. Yeah, with, right. in yeah. relationship to? Knowledge. It said Adam knew Eve, his wife, and maybe she... She bore a son. So it, it represents something different, more than just knowledge. Okay? Because really, classically, it re it's, it's the key to intimacy. When it says Adam knew, and they always give, use the word God to be known, to be intimacy. He was the one. But, it's, but, but really, <clears throat> so the way I, I heard Rabbi Masri say, the word is, uh, is connection. To connect, the ability to connect, because really, in a certain sense, it really is the connection from the brain to the emotions, is that. Mm. But it's more than that, of course, the ability of man to connect with his wife. Okay, that's what it's really called dot. You cannot connect without dot. The third blessing we say in the Shemona is right every day. It's so great that blessing. Oh man, you just gotta retrain yourself when you say that blessing. But the, I'm sorry, the fourth blessing, right? The fourth blessing is, do we have a sitter here? Oh. Yeah. Now, I usually don't want to use Rabbi Art Scroll, okay? Your husband's waving goodbye. <laughs> don't leave me! <laughs> he has to go back to work. Somebody has to earn a living. That's right. right. I'm in class. Okay, fine. So it says here, You graciously endow man with knowledge, but it's more than that. And you teach insight to a frail mortal. <clears throat> That's really interesting how they call him frail. Endow us graciously from yourself with wisdom, insight, and knowledge. Okay, but we have a different a new side. This is Nusach Sar. Oh, thank you. Chachma bina v'da'at. Right? Ata chonein l'adam da'at. You graciously bestow to man da'at. And you teach uh, mankind understanding. Please graciously grant us from your chachma, your bina, and your da'at. Your wisdom, your understanding, and your knowledge. And then we finally say, Baruch ata Hashem chonein hata'at. Blessed are you, Hashem, who's Honein, who graciously is the giver of Da'at, which really we're going to translate now different as connector, connection. The ability to connect. Without Da'at, you cannot connect. There's no part of me like the part of yourself. Oh, ain aniut ela the Da'at. So the only poverty is in the Da'at, is in the mind. Actually, that's loosely translated. The only poverty is in the mind. But anyways, they use the word dot. Ain't any of the dot. You need this connection factor. The idea here is when we say the word baruch, of course, my, the, the real translation is not what people say here. Okay? Baruch was, it really means source. Every time we say a blessing, you know, we're really just saying you are the source. Baruch hata means source are you. You have to retrain your brain to think that. Because that's really what we are doing when we're saying a blessing. We're reconnecting ourselves. We're becoming aware, totally, of who is the source. So we're saying, source are you, Yud Kei Vav Kei, master of everything, who was, is, and will be. Honein, who graciously gives the ability to connect. Da'at is the oh. ability to connect. So That's that makes sense towards the, at the end of the, uh, of the bracha, someone else says amen, which is, I agree, that that is the source? Absolutely. That's what it is. 
when we're doing this, as much more is supposed to be going on than what you probably experience in most synagogues. What when, really? When is this prayer? This is the fourth blessing in the silent prayer, the standing prayer. Oh, yeah. In the weekday, in the weekday, you don't say it in Shabbat. The weekday prayer is this one. In other words, you can't begin until you've connected. Why don't okay? you stay on Shabbat? Oh, because Shabbat, they made the prayers sh shorter, so you don't have to, because they want you to enjoy Shabbat. Shabbat, the service of Shabbat is oneg. You have to have pleasure. So if you're davening all day, it's not pleasure. Okay? Isn't, isn't the connection... Some people I have pleasure in davening all day. Okay? And it's okay. <laughs> but they don't want to make it obligatory. And you have to say a long Shmon Esrei. Yeah, gotcha. okay? okay? So they say, so they shorten it to make it only seven blessings. As opposed to 18 blessings. Okay? That some seven that we don't. Right? So they make it seven blessings on Shabbat. So they don't have that on Shabbat. Okay? So, okay. So anyways, the ability to communicate to one's six is the ability to communicate one's thoughts effectively. It represents God's knowledge. We said that. Paradoxical with Ketcher's free will policy, which we discussed. Eight is the interface between the mental and emotional. This is what's very key here. Okay? That's why we say, God, give me dot. Because why? i got to feel it. Because a lot of times, I know this. Everybody has this. We go through it all the time. Is you can intellectualize a lot of things, but then your emotions don't, aren't going the same way. Mm -hmm. A lot of times it happens with every single thing. I'll give you a simple example. Okay? You know, it brings down in a, in a, a great safer of, uh, of the Bilvavi. The Bilvavi says, you know, listen, you know, our whole existence, our whole purpose in creation is just one thing and one thing only. And that's just to connect to God. That's it. You have to be attached to God all the time. When you wake up, when you go to sleep, all the time, everything is connection. So, you know, he gives a great exercise that, you know, because really the, the, the main thrust of, of that safer, which is a really important safer, which was how to awaken yourself to see God everywhere all the time, mm. right? And to be with God all the time, because that's really our goal. You have to have on an index card, you look up in the morning, why am I here? I'm here to attach to God, okay? Every 15 minutes, he says, you should actually take it out and look at it to remind Jesus. yourself, because why? We get caught up, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So he, he brings a great, uh, um, colorful uh, example of a guy who's going, he needs to go buy a table. To go buy a table. So you go when you go buy a table, you gotta go with God to buy a table. You don't go buy a table alone. You gotta go with God to buy a table. So you walk down the street and you go, God, you know, I'm gonna go into the store, I'm gonna buy a table. Please let me pick the right table. You always talk to God. You always talk to God, right? So you go and you see a table and you like that table and you just you know be according to your needs and and you buy the table, and you deliver the table, and the table's in your house. And then what happens is someone walks in, into your house, a neighbor, a friend, and they go, wow, I see you got a, a nice table. Wow, how much did you pay for it? What? I had this place here. Go on here, this line. You could have got a much bigger table. For that. <laughs> Look at this table. <laughs> <laughs> and you go like... <laughs> so then you got to go back to God. You go, God... We went together. <laughs> what happened? What happened? Just, you led me this astray. Is, this, is, this is no, 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 no. But, but see, see, obviously, your mind is saying, "Well, listen." You, see, you go, God. I, I, we went. To, we went to. We went, we went to go to the table to get a table together, and you showed me this table, and it, fit, it and it found favor in my eyes. I liked it, and it was good for me. And, and this is the one that that I picked out together. So I know that you were with me the whole time in buying this table and picking it out. But my feelings are not there right now. Right? In other words, I know intellectually that this was the right table for me and this was the good choice because I made it already. I did it. I went with you to go buy a table. We picked it out ourselves. Right? It won favor in my eyes. I liked it. I bought it. But yet I see this. I had this experience just now. You know? So... My mind is saying one thing and my emotions are saying another. I regret it. I feel bad. And so God, please, if you can help me that my emotions, my feelings 
can match the thoughts in my head. That the thoughts in my head will come down and that I will feel better, not better, like 100% that it was the good thing for me to have this thing. So moving from the intellect to the feelings, I think with the Divrei Chaim, one of these big Hasidic rabbis, uh, he was being uh, looked at by a doctor, I think his, his health, you know. And, uh, yeah, and, and the doctor was, you know, I, I don't know the exact details of the conversation, but the doctor was talking about, you know, we went to this school and that school, and he was boasting about, you know, I think, uh, you know, doctors do, they boast. Right? <laughs> I went to this school and that school, I studied here, there, there, uh, 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 right? And he says, well, you know, what, what, what do you do? Right? You know, and he says what he's oh, he says what he's been working on. You know, working on this kind of this kind of solving this problem, my problem. And he says, "What are you problems? I'm just I'm trying to build a bridge. Hmm. I've been I've been working on building a bridge from my my mind to my heart my whole life. Wow. That's a good response. Wow. Yeah, right. So 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 the idea really is the dot is the is the is the bridge. Mm-hmm. Everything is focusing on the dot because it helps us. God, give me the dot. That's like that's why it's the, the first three blessings of the Shemona Esrei is I, you are everything. You can do everything. And you are so beyond. Right? I'm, you know, Magain Abraham is, you know, I don't, I, only because of the forefathers do I have a right to exist in your presence. The second one is there's nothing you cannot do. You can revive the dead. There's nothing you cannot do. And the third one is, is you are so beyond. So the first three blessings are essentially just establishing who you are, who I am. What's the relationship here? Because you always have to refocus on that all the time. And then the first move into your requests, the very first one is, I gotta have dot. Dot is everything. Because I, got, I can have all the, mod, the ideas in my head, but if I don't move them down here into the emotions, it's gornished. And then there's a big, huge reason for it. Okay? Because you really need it into the emotions. It has to resonate with your kishkas. Because once you resonate it with your kishkas, then you create a, a huge, powerful force. That's the angels that we create with our with our mind. Okay? So I say number eight is the interface between the mental and emotional brings it down to the emotional realm. Okay? When we sing Shema, that's what we're doing. Whenever man exercises free will, dot disappears in Keter manifest. Wait a minute, what did I say here? Ah, okay. That aspect of dot, which is like what we were saying before, and it represents the midbrain and the spine. So that's why dot, it's a quasi sphera And that's why actually, really, that the members of Chabad, you know, they, they look at Keter as being so sublime, it's not even there, and they call themselves Keter Chachman Bina, which is Chabad. <clears throat> they don't look at Keter. I'm mean, sorry, they look at Chachma Bina and dot, which is Chabad. That's why they call themselves Chabad, because of these three spheros. And they don't look at Mr. Keter. Mr. Keter isn't in the picture. Okay? He's too sublime. It's not really part of us. So we're just looking at the lower three spheros, which a lot of Kabbalists have an issue with. Okay? Which is like, well, how can you do how can you just how can you just kick him out of the party? Right? You just kick some you kick the main dude out of the party. Right? You know, so we don't, we don't, a lot of people, you know, like to have Keter in the party. So if Keter is in the party, Dad is not in the party. Okay? So that's where you'll see a difference in this. Okay? So now we, let's go. Oh, oh, Baruch Hashem. This is exactly where we need to go. Number, page 30. In a way which your man wants to go, they lead him. This is my, what? Like the way you wrote it, I said, imagine that. Well, you know, you know, it's not that I looked at this to this morning. You understand? (laughs) Yeah, I I wrote this. uh, Please with your work. What's the word? 2016. I think I wrote this in 2003. Wow. Okay. Three years, maybe four. Anyway. Wow. All right. So I I don't know where I put what. I threw it all together. I'm writing a book on this, actually, this one page. Okay? Actually, I've got started again. Right? Baruch Hashem. 
hopefully the manuscript. Good for you. Hashem help me, and I pray every day for it. Okay, mm-hmm. I'm just, you know, it's mostly it's editing. I wrote it all already. It's just editing. It's like ah, oh, it's done. grueling. It's grueling, man. I got a, a jar of M and M's and a jar of M and M's and a and a venti latte. You know, you know? maybe a glass of wine. <laughs> a glass of wine. I'll try that next time. That might put me to sleep. <laughs> That'll keep you calm. <laughs> <laughs> So here's like this is such a key idea here, and we cannot integrate this enough. Okay, that there's this phrase that brings down in the Gemara says in the way which a man wants to go they leave him. But then we always I always bring this back. Okay, in a way which a man wants to go they leave him, which is a very unusual phrase. It brings it down by Bilam, actually, oh. Bilam. I just want to make sure I didn't write it in here. Okay. So Bilaam, Bilaam was this wicked prophet that was hired to go curse the Jewish people. Mm-hmm. And King Balak sent emissaries to go invite Bilaam, who was the anti-Moses, right? Moses, and they had even the anti-Moses to combat the Moses, right? He used his mouth, he used his mouth, right? So they needed another prophet, who was the only prophet was Bilaam among the nations, to come and curse the Jewish people so they could wage war because, you know, they're undefeated. The Jewish people just blew away the superpower nation. they just chomping over every single thing in the desert, anything in its path, right? we got to defeat them, right? They can't, we, they must be stopped from getting into the land of Israel. You know, even though Balak, you know, Midian and, and Moab were not really in their way, right? They weren't, it wasn't like, they, they don't, it's not like they're attacking us. No, they're, 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 pat, they're going that way. But they have, we have to stop them from getting there. Really out of their way, real anti Semites. Okay? So they hire Balak, and the first time that the emissaries went to Balak, Balak says, I have to ask God. He asks God, and God says, No, you can't go, right? Second time, they sent, he, sent a, he sent another set of emissaries, more important. Right? I don't think it was the Clintons. But <laughs> it depends what time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, he said some like you know some really important people, right? And they asked him a second time, and then God says, "If these men come to call you, go with them." I'm like, what happened here? Wait a minute. The first time God says no, and the second time God says, "If these men come to call you, go with them." What's going on? This is very very strange. What the message is is, is different. So the answer with this, that the way which a man wants to go, they lead him, and the question is, who are they? Yeah. So the answer is this, who is a they? With every single thought, we are taught that every thought that a person thinks, also every word or action he creates, or there is created corresponding that thought, an angel that pulls him towards him or her towards the fulfillment of that thought or idea. Whether the thought is good or bad, there is active creation. Okay? This is... Can I borrow your pen? So in other words, here obviously it's just a, such a dynamic concept that you really have to contemplate this. Every single thought you think, there is a corresponding energy called an angel that is created corresponding that thought. Okay? Every thought. How many, things, how many thoughts you think in a day? Right? Yeah. <laughs> Don't ask any normal Texan. Three. <laughs> Beer, smoke. And you know, in Texas. 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 Right? <laughs> Three. <laughs> okay. So so they they estimate around sixty thousand to hundred thousand thoughts a day. That's sixty thousand to hundred thousand angels that you're thinking in a day. And not all angels are created equal. You're gonna have some are much more powerful than others. Okay? Because the way it's looked at is like, you know, the screens where you have uh, the news guys playing. You know, I use that in my book, but I don't know if I should use it for metaphor because a lot of times the, the, the guy's talking and then there's ticker tape going yeah. on the bottom, yeah. right? Sometimes the guy's just talking for the sake of talking. It's just like, just give me some real news. But, you know, nowadays they just got to keep you, right? So they have, blah, 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 like, dude. But mostly, let's say, if it's a news flash of breaking news, let's look at it like that. Really, now it's a 24 7 breaking yeah. news because they got to keep you, right? Uh,. So a lot of times, you know, the, the stuff flashing is, you know, it's always going. 
So there's, there's, there's types of thoughts which are always kind of flashing through, flashing in, flashing out. But then there's the real thoughts which have a, a resonance to them. And the way I use it is called, I use the tuning forks. Uh, the example of the tuning forks is, let's say, I didn't bring them because I didn't, like I said, I was really surprised and I pauses, okay? Is, you know, every thought that you think with conviction, you'll, uh, you'll, you'll agree with me, has a certain feeling tone. Okay? It will produce in you a feeling tone. Usually, it mostly comes out when you're aggravated about something, if somebody crossed the line. Okay? If somebody crosses the line, you get upset. I'm, I'm going to use something really cool, like car, you know, something not so, so personal that hits home. My father in law, Zahusa Yagena Lena, very uh, wonderful man. He, his heart was always for Am Yisrael. And he was great at, at, at calling out where there's something of a vodazora, of, of idolatry. He was great with it, okay? So once upon a time, in the city where he lived, called Emmanuel, they were saying, oh, the gem god is coming, the stone. Right? Now, there's a big, huge thing about stones and the energy that stones give and mm -hmm. the healing energy and the all you. Yeah. So the stone god's coming. Oh, that's great. And he comes by every once in a while and he says, you need the wisdom stone. And you, the, right? and you need also the love stone. And you need this stone. And you get these person, these three stones. You need a different set of stone. You know, that would be $59.49. And then for you, that would be you know, it's $349. And you, you need these stones. And you give everybody stone. Everybody, ah, I got the stone. My, my father-in-law just went berserk. Mm. <laughs> a monosaur slamming the door, screaming at the streets. Like, damn this gem guy, right? He's like, the curse, he cursed him out. And right, left, and center. He, it was in him. You understand the resonance of, like, this is idolatry and it must be stopped. Okay? It hit a nerve in him, in his kishkas, and that's it. Okay? So that, you're going to see, when a person gets like that, somebody crossed the line. And he doesn't like idolatry. He's a Levite anyway. Those Levites, they have a, they're, they're great. No, they, no idolatry. There's zero tolerance for idolatry. We kill people for that. Okay, so I'm one of them, right? And so he was just more very, you know, subtle. He knew when there were even the thought of idolatry, he would call it. Okay, so so in other words, it hit it hit it hits a chord. So I say usually, it hits a chord in a person. Right? Let's say usually if they're met with some kind of stimulus which crossed the line. Okay? So you can understand how thoughts that are deep, that a person has a deep conviction over, creates a feeling tone. Get it? Got it? So the idea is that creates an energy. Okay? So the deeper the conviction is going to be the greater the angel as opposed to. Uh, maybe I should have a, maybe I should go for a Snickers bar, and maybe not. Okay, should I go for pizza? No. Okay? Something like that, or just like passing through. There are thoughts that do come into our mind all the time, and they pass in and they pass out like the ticker tape. But then there are certain thoughts where, no, it's Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokein, Hashem Echad. Right? And I stand for this. I stand for this. And you know, and if you would put, you'd be put to the question, you know what you stand for. If it would be brought out or come to your conscious mind, and all of a sudden you lose, right? So, so the idea really is whether there's a good thought or whether there's a bad thought, right? Like I said here, don't think these uh, right here. I have to say this, right? These angels are not to be understood as little naked babies flying around. That's what people get. You know, people have an idea, God forbid, but rather they are spiritual energies. Every thought creates an energy tone that only knows how to draw experiences that are in harmony with that same energy. Now, I'm looking now for the positive. Mm -hmm. Now, that was a I just gave you an example of something where you're met with some stimulus and then you respond, mm -hmm. just to give you an idea of what a feeling tone could feel like, okay? But now you have to try to create within yourself a higher level on the positive side, something that you really feel, that you really believe in, in terms of, let's say, your dream. Think of your dream. Okay? Think of something that, and you, in a dream that is really possible, 
And then maybe some people would try to deter you from your dream. Ah, oh, give it up. And you, go, and you go, no. Twisting. Totally twisting. Totally twisting. Right? So you have a resonance. That energy, right? Just finish the sentence for me. I'm going to give it to you right now. I want blank. Fill it in. Okay? Like, what do you want? And if you answer that question, and it might take a lifetime, hopefully not, you can make, come up with a list. What do you want? And and if you get clarity with conviction, that creates a certain energy. And that energy, that thought, will only will push you to bring you, to bring to fruition the nature of that thought only. Okay? And A, we call it, we, I usually use tuning forks. If I have a tuning fork and I strike a tuning fork, it makes a certain sound. If I take with this sound, with it resonating, and I take another A and I touch it to it, it, the sound moves over to the other A. If I take an A and I strike it and it's making this sound, and I take an E, a different note, and I touch it to it, it cancels it out. In A, the energy, and this works all the time and all over the place, your energy level, your resonance, only knows how to find congruence with only what is around you. Okay? And it only knows how to find experiences which are in the same vibration, the same energy tone that you walk around with. If you walk around with fear, then you find things to be afraid of. If you walk around with certainty, you meet people who are also certain. You meet people who are also... If you walk around with positivity, you tend to meet people or experiences which are in the same nature of that positivity. Or that certainty. If you have doubts, you meet people who also have doubts. You will come in contact with experiences which are in the same thing. It happens, it works that way all the time. The idea really is to focus the thoughts. Because what happens is, if you think 60,000 thoughts a day, right? 30,000 are thinking one way and 30,000 are thinking the other. So then you end up being like an airplane. With one engine facing one way and one engine facing the other. Rabbi, why is my life going nowhere? Okay? Because you're spinning in circles. Because you haven't focused your thoughts. You have to focus. What do you want? Okay, you have to do this. You have to do that. You have to do the other thing. We're busy throughout our day with all the kinds of activities. But underlying it, you have to resonate and believe with conviction that you can access your goals. They are accessible. You can't pick something that's not accessible, but somehow... It has worked. It's wild. Um, one, I, I asked the Amshin of a Rebbe. The Amshin of a Rebbe, you know, I said, what if I wanted a million dollars? Am I going to get it? You know, don't forget, I, the reason why I got onto this was because of my father. My father who had an inoperable brain tumor and they gave him two weeks and two months to live. And he didn't do anything except focus on God for peace of mind. That's all he did. He meditated, he drank Diet Coke, he ate chocolate from the 99 cent store. Right? He didn't do anything except just meditate and focus on God for peace, for peace of mind. A year later, the, the came, there wasn't a trace of a brain tumor. Wow. And my dad is the one who teaches, you know, all of this stuff. Except I, you know, I was out there and I know my dad teaches consciousness becomes form. He's a big, he's a big, he's, he's, the, he's one of the early Jew gurus in there. Not Jew gurus, one of the early, uh, you know. Uh, rum, bum, bum, motivational speaker, right? Rum, bum, that was rum, bum, bum, motivational. He was like the one of the early guys who did the seminars in California with the consciousness ring. That's pretty cool, right? With the idea of consciousness becomes form. Consciousness becomes form. What the thoughts you think in your mind form the beliefs that become your reality. Okay? So I, was, I took that and I said, well, I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta go see where this is in the Torah. Like what you do, right? We gotta see, where is this in the Torah? You see, you have an experience here, where is this in the map? I gotta see the map. I gotta see the source. So I went and asked a lot of rabbis in Jerusalem. I said, does, does consciousness become form? Most rabbis said, yes. 
And I said, and I, I knew this source from Gomor and Mako, but I wanted them to come up with other sources. But basically, this was the main source. Mm-hmm. The thoughts we think only push us to bring to fruition whatever it is based on the thoughts that we think because they produce energies. The ones that we think with conviction. Is it clear? Yeah. Okay? So we can ask for the many laws. Ah, I didn't finish that. Thank you for reminding me. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, this is on the doorway with the Amshin of Rebbe and says, if I wanted a million dollars, am I going to get it? No. But he says, if you need a million dollars, oh. then you'll get it. In other words, if you put yourself in a mindset yeah. state Conviction. that I yeah. need yeah. this, yeah. and you have to come up with, of course, you're going to fill out all the details of why you need it. Uh-huh. Right. Rabbi Nachman said it. I found it in, in, in Kuf Yutet, in, in Lakute Maran. Lakute Maran says, if you put your mind to it, thoughts are very powerful, Rabbi Nachman says. It brings in many places in Stichot Aran and Lakute Maran in his books. Mm-hmm. Thoughts are extremely powerful, extremely powerful. If you put your mind to it, even to get money, Rabbi Nachman says, even to get money, you'll get it. But you have to come up with a place of need, not want. Oh, it'd be nice to have a Maserati. No, I want a Maserati, right? Right? No, it's not going to work. I'll but if you need it... an engine and four wheels. What? <laughs> Say that again? I'll just take something with an engine and four wheels. Right, exactly. <laughs> and I have prayed for that, too. Thank you. <laughs> and got answered the next day. We're getting curious. I did it, Bodo do. I'm obviously, to have a car in Israel is a big Kiddush, especially a few years ago. I pray, I God, you know, I need a car. I need a car. I, I don't care. Just give me something safe that gets me from A to B. And Mamish, I came back from Spot, my Bodudu trip in Spot. I came to, and my friend Aaron Sokol is he, he got in a car accident, and he had money from his uncle or family. He got himself a new car, and that car was sitting there. He says, "Take it." Oh, 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 wow. It was a it was a Tranta. They call it a Tranta in the Tranta. You know Hebrew, right? Tranta is like it was a wreck. Okay, it had no fender. You know, beat up, but dude, that baby ran. I loved it. Okay. It was oh, God sent, okay? And so... Um, so you have to change to push it one for so I turn need. On. <laughs> yeah, but of course, with, when you say I need, you have to have all the stuff that comes with it, meaning you're going to have to be able to overcome any obstacle because a need obviously makes it extremely more pressing than want, wouldn't you say? Right? If I need to have that. I need to have this. If you make it a need, it becomes it it, it 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 hits something inside of you. That's where the dot comes in. See, the dot is you got it in the mind, but you got to move it in the kishkas. That's why I'm bringing this here, is because it has to have a conviction, a resonance. It has to have an energy. The more re- the more resonance, the more energy it creates. The strong, the powerful, the angel that's going to bring you to that destiny. Okay. So the problem is here, so I, I, here going back in the second paragraph, I've heard it estimated that a person thinks anywhere between 60,000 to 100,000 thoughts a day. I think I've heard of Label Wolf say 100,000 thoughts a day. I don't know where he got that from. I got mine from Deepak Chopra in a lecture a long time ago, right, for 60,000 thoughts a day, right? But except for, of course, Texan. Uh, three. <laughs> so, and this is live, baby. Get out of here. They're, they're going to be coming with their trucks and, 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 and shotguns right now, right? What would you say about Texans thinking three thoughts? It's four. <laughs> it's shoot the rabbi. That's number four. <laughs> okay. So that means 60 to 100,000 angels a day. These are forces that we create. The problem is 95% of the angels we create today were the same confused armies of yesterday. The problem is we suffer from what's called stinking thinking. Okay? Meaning our thoughts are polluted. We're, we've been messed up. We're on a habit. Yeah. We habitually are taught to think certain ways. Right? The media. <laughs> the evil media. Right? Technology. We've been taught and we've been training. You gotta really know how to think. Thank God for Torah. Thank God for Torah. Torah is the best thought diet ever. And you need people need to go on a thought diet. People think have cup. Physical diets, no 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 no. Biggest matter of fact I went to uh, okay, we're I'm a little over. 
I, I went to a, um, <clears throat> I got, I went, I, I got a, actually a degree in, in Chinese medicine oh, a, wow. from a, a university in France many years ago. Mm-hmm. And he was going really? over, yeah, it was the electrical acupuncture, right? Okay. I passed the test, I got the degree, but never practiced, right? In any case, because that was when my dad was sick. I had to fly over, take the test, and fly back. And I was too busy. And then I just threw everything anyways, because really, it's all God. Mm-hmm. But in any case, he was going over a list, and he said, you know, there's many ways that we take in energy. There's many ways. And, the, and he gave a list, you know, you got the food, you got the drink, you got the water, and, and touch is a way of taking in energy. But the highest was thoughts. He put number one. Oh, wow. The highest way you take in energy and vitality is through your mental state. So it's not Black Lives Matter, it's thoughts matter. Yes, thank you. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautifully said. Pen. <laughs> my pen, my pen. I came <laughs> for a pen. I love it. Not yeah. Black Lives Matter. Yes, I am. Not that they don't, but... Thoughts oh. matter. I love it. Okay, so anyways, habits definitely rule in the realm of thought. If half your thoughts, we spoke about this, are positive and inspirational, and the other half doom and gloom, how far will one get? Yeah. It's like an airplane we spoke about, one facing one way, one facing the other way. You're going in circles. The key is focus of will. Two key rules. The mind is like a garden oven. This is amazing. You have to really grasp this. It's like a garden or an oven. A garden is, you know, whatever you plant in it, it's going to sprout. If you plant wheat, you're going to get wheat. If you plant corn, you're going to get corn. If you plant wheat, you're not going to get corn. I don't understand. I keep planting wheat. I'm not getting any corn. Right? Yeah, they are. It's a demented world. Okay? It's, 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 the, uh, it's the millennials. Uh. <laughs> Hanging out at the Starbucks, you know. Okay? <laughs> you know, I'm planting corn and I'm going to get wheat. Okay? Is that your Trump face? Yeah. An oven doesn't care what you put into it. You can put dirt, it's going to bake dirt. You can put a cake, it'll bake a cake. Your mind is the same way. What thoughts are you going to introduce into your mind? Okay? It doesn't care. That's it. it. The mind is fertile ground. The problem is there's a lot of weeds which you got to pluck. But like I say, this is tip of the iceberg. Okay? The mind is an ocean that we fish in. Okay, which thoughts do we fish in? Right? From our endless ocean of our subconscious because that gets into now where do thoughts come from? What thoughts can you... You know, the, your brain is always going. Your brain is always going. But if you can, anytime you want to, you can grab the rain, grab the wheel. Okay? Just like you're, you're always breathing. But then, uh, and then if you need to focus on your breathing, yoga, meditation, then you, all of a sudden you can go into conscious mode. So conscious thinking. Consciously creating. Okay? Uh, society is, you know, is driving us to a different place. If you haven't grasped what I'm saying here. You know, they want you to be just sitting in front of the TV set like this. Absolutely. Okay? Just keep sleeping. Just keep sleeping. Everything will be fine. Right? Mm -mm. So it's all about our patterns of thinking, but it all starts with becoming aware of the thoughts you think. Is it a positive or negative? Does it have love and fear in it? The Baal Shem Tov says, put judges and officers in all your gates. That means your gates are the thoughts. The thoughts is, put judges and officers is love and fear. Deciding to become a connoisseur of thoughts. Yeah, some people only like the best coffee. Why not only the best thoughts for your brain? Instead of the sewage that comes spewing out through who knows what, you know, you know, uh, what, whatever, whether it's internet or TV. Sewage. Rabbi Victor Miller called it. Would you let sewage, would you spew out sewage in your living room? No. So why would you have a TV? Because it has ideas and thoughts that are also garbage thoughts. That's what he said. Most of it. Garbage. Most of it. No, yeah, okay, you can get okay, you get to watch twenty hours of TV for one nice little thought that you can look into a Torah book and get it in one second. Mm-hmm. Right? Know your positive inspirations and stay focused on them. Picture being removed of all financial concern. Aha. This is this is gonna help you. If money was never an issue in your life, what would you do with your time as far as your contribution to humanity? Answer that question. Yeah, it's a very good question. If no. money was never an issue in your life, what would you do as far as your contribution to humanity? And you have to know that. Picture it now. 
because really money is not really an issue. It's an illusion. All money is to create you from God. You can do a lot of effort, a little effort. It's coming anyway. There's nothing you can can or can't do. Okay? You have to do effort, but that's a whole other topic. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Weed out the bad seed thoughts with the kosher thought diet, and I hope Torah is the best kosher thought diet around, and we'll stop now. You so, um, is any